June or something we'll start to construct a really neat nice bath where like two or three people can get in the tub at once and uh, maybe some hot water showers and stuff. And how did he get the money? Begging. Begging is quite uh, uh, efficient. And he got a lot of money? Yeah. Um, probably you shouldn't tell this anybody on, on the TV or something but you as a single person you can earn thousands of dollars a day. For Dong Dong Ju, for good combination. I wanted to bring some from Korea, but it's a very, it's a living alcohol, so the bottles never completely close. If you close or glass bottles, it's the only plastic and the, um, the lid is very loose, so if I take it from Korea all over... <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Last time we were here, Muesan put on a great performance. <laughs> I hope he can repeat that. <laughs> That was just incredible. <laughs> you have never, you have never seen anything like it. <laughs> Shared with us. We're always eager to hear new stories about our beloved senior, our superior. <laughs> yeah, he showed his true face. <laughs> We would like your a bit of your life story. Mm. I mean, first encounter with Sen. Mm. How did that happen? Mm. Uh, I was 16 and I lived in boarding school. And I wasn't interested in religion, in Buddhism, and especially I wasn't interested in meditation. Uh, but there was a small meditation circle on one of the... Mm, teachers there was responsible for that meditation circle and he called it uh, meditation in the style of Zen so he asked me well uh, have you tried it and I said no I've never tried it I'm not interested in this then well he says well how can you know if you have never tried so I went there with the intention to do it only once uh, but then it turned out that for one year I was the only one who came all the time why did you go back to do that sitting? If that I don't know. There, there was a certain pull. And also for the first time I had the feeling that I have really contact with my body. I felt my body for the first time. Until then my body was just a vehicle, a tool to sort of entertain my mind. So I didn't have a really close connection with the body. I didn't think of the body as myself. And I didn't really know my body. I never... Um, had paid attention to physical um, awareness, like like pain, for example, or to my breath, to my heartbeat. That was completely new, and I think that was what, in the first time, always pulled me there, all the time. And I really, yeah, in, I enjoyed it, although I didn't have all these fancy experiences everybody else had. <laughs> Until that time, I had no, really, no idea what I was doing. And I started to read books on Zen for the first time then, after almost one a year of sitting, I heard about things like Satori. For mo many people, it's the other way around. First they hear Satori, and then they hear, to get Satori, you have to do Zazen. For me, that was first the physical experience. Yeah. <laughs> and then I heard there's something like Satori, the solution to all the problems, the answer to everything. From the time I was nine or ten years old, there was this question, if I have to die someday, then in that moment it will not have mattered if I had a happy life or an unhappy life, if I have lived for 100 years or only for 10 years, if I have committed suicide, if I have uh, been father of 12 children, if I have been a mass murderer, it won't make any difference in the moment when I die, because, well, then I'm gone. So. Why bother to live at all? And when I read Suzuki, I thought, or Kaplow, I thought, well, this feels fine. I feel my body, it feels good, although I not, I'm not knowing what I'm actually doing. And plus, I could find all the answers to all these doubts I had and never solved and nobody could answer to me. There came to be a distance between myself and the practice because now I couldn't be content with sitting alone anymore mm. because I was waiting for this moment where not only I was feeling good in the sitting, but also the answer would be there to all those questions. So you got caught in the enlightenment. Exactly, exactly. I got, I got caught in that uh, pitfall everybody falls into. And then I went for one year to Japan in 22 and they gave me the address of Shohaksan. I was supposed to study in Kyoto for 12 months, but I was dissatisf dissatisfied with the situation there. So after six months, I quit and went to Antaji through Shoaksan's introduction. Ah. And when I went here, I thought, well, this is really it. What is it that draws me there to sit in, on a cushion in front of the wall? I couldn't, couldn't, well, I could give many explanations, but none that would satisfy myself. And even now, I couldn't tell you why I'm doing this. If you want to express it in a negative way, it's a kind of addiction. An addiction, yeah. yeah. So you, um, you don't feel good if you, don't, if you can't sit. 
for a long time that was the case. I couldn't couldn't do without for more than two weeks or at the most two months. It always felt like feels like coming home when you sit down for the first time again after such a period. Like coming home. I feel like coming home from from having yeah, uh, like traveling for the desert for three months and then you're home again. But it took me a very long time, and I lost energy in Zazen. When you when you have this idea there's Satori, maybe only one step away, yeah. you're very ambitious. And when you hear, well, the Satori isn't, isn't waiting there for you, it's just the sitting itself. Um, no need to fight. Then you lose all this energy. Yeah. Because, well, the carrot isn't hanging there anymore. Right. <coughs> And were you just as excited about it as you had expected? No, not at all. What uh, it, happened? It, it, it proved to be yeah, the exact opposite of what I had expected. Well, uh, it was not the girl you had fell in love with? Or it exactly, was a different girl? exactly. Yeah, as with girls, yeah, when, when you move in with her, she proves to be yeah, not the one. <laughs>